Today, we are visiting one of the founding wineries here in the Napa Valley. It's a historic winery established by one of Napa Valley's first female winemakers. Let's check out Fremark Abbey. We're Grant and Teresa Boggs, and we're on a mission to visit every winery in the Napa Valley. Yes, all 450 plus of them. And wine tasting here isn't just about what's in your glass. It's about the whole experience. Through food, architecture, and picture-perfect views, it's all in the details. Wine's an adventure. Let's do it. Freemark Abbey is one of the wineries that we've driven past dozens of times. And each time we do, Grant and I turn to each other and say how one day we should actually stop in. Well, today's the day. Welcome to Freemark Abbey in Calistoga, California. In 1881, Josephine Tyson and her husband John purchased about 150 acres of property just north of St. Helena. She and her husband both dreamed of being winemakers, so they planted Zinfandel, Riesling, and Burgundy vines on the estate. Sadly, John died, leaving Josephine a widow. But Josephine forged on and established Tyson Cellars in 1886. In 1898, Josephine sold the winery to her friend, who named it Lombarda Cellars, after his home place of Lombardy in Italy. In fact, to this day you can still see the name Lombarda Cellars on the street front of the building. It operated as Lombarda Cellars until Prohibition. So it was Tyson Cellars, and later Lombarda Cellars. How did it become Fremark Abbey? Honestly, when I first heard the name Fremark Abbey, I thought it was a former convent or maybe a monastery. Turns out, it's named after the three men who bought the business and brought it back to life after Prohibition. Their names were Charles Freeman, Markin Foster, and Albert, or Abbey, Ahern. Combine them and you get Fremark Abbey. Mystery solved. Well, that's enough history for the day. Let's get to the wine, shall we? We checked in at the front desk and picked up our welcome splash, which is basically a little tasting before the tasting. And as a side note, can I say how much I love it when a winery does a welcome splash? It's so welcoming. A few wineries do this, like Urgach Hills, Clopin Gauze, Elizabeth Spencer, which we featured on the channel last week, and several others. It's just a really fun way to start the experience. Anyway, we went upstairs to the main tasting area, and it was not at all what I expected, based on the outside of the building. The outside looks very historic, with the original brick and mortar look. On the inside, the decor is a lot more contemporary than I expected, but I thought it looked great. It's classy, intimate, and modern. What I love about the Freemark tasting room is that a few of their tables are set up in these little nooks or pods. It feels very private and special. Another cool touch was how they personalized the tasting menus with your party's name on it. I definitely kept mine as a souvenir. So the tasting that we signed up for is called the Comparative Tasting. Basically, we get to have three side-by-side -side comparisons of two different wines for six different wines in total. You can think of them as three head-to-head -head matches. Comparison number one was between two Merlots, the 2021 Merlot Boucher versus the 2019 Stagecoach Vineyard Merlot. The Boucher was grown in Rutherford, so the floor of the Napa Valley, while the Stagecoach was grown up in Atlas Peak, a much harsher, cooler environment. So you have two wines of the same varietal, Merlot, grown in two different parts of the valley, and you get two very distinct wines. The Boucher is grown in a hot, gravelly vineyard, and so the wines are much more distressed. The wine has a blueberry aroma, and it's very fruit-driven, tasting of berries and a hint of milk chocolate. The Stagecoach has much more of a dark cherry and plum flavor. Both were good, but we ended up taking home a bottle of... The Boucher. Round number two was a side-by-side -side comparison of two red blends, the 2018 Restoration Red versus the 2019 Partners Blend. They have a lot of the same types of grapes in them, but the composition of each makes a big difference. With the Restoration Red, you have 43% Cabernet Sauvignon, 43% Merlot, 9% Cab Franc, and 5% Petit Verdot. It smells like a cedar forest and tastes like chocolate and plums. Over on the other side, the 2019 Partner Blend is 59% Cabernet Franc, 39% Merlot, and 2% Cabernet Sauvignon. 
For the 2019 Partners Blend, the Cab Franc is the headlining star. The Partners Blend has more of an espresso and cloves flavor. Our pick of the two, Restoration Red. And finally, round three. Where are we? The Napa Valley. And in Napa, Cab is King. So of course, our third comparison is of two cabs, a 2018 Oakville Cabernet Sauvignon versus the 2019 Boche Cabernet Sauvignon. The Oakville Cab is a 100% cab, aged for 27 months in 100% French oak. It smells like cigars and leather, and it's more peppery than the Boche. What about the 2019 Boche? It's 93% Cabernet Sauvignon and 7% Merlot, aged for 24 months in 100% French oak. The Boche has flavors of creamy vanilla and baking spices. Again, we like both, but if we had to choose one, we'd go with the Boche. When it comes to comparing wine here, there really aren't any bad choices. Everything's just a matter of preference. So head on down to Freemark Abbey and be your own judge. If you like this video, please hit that subscribe button. Grant and I would very much appreciate it. And it'll keep you notified as soon as we drop a new video every week. As we mentioned, we're on a quest to visit every winery in the Napa Valley. If you have any suggestions on where we should go next, drop them in a comment below. See you next time.